Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan? I can't believe my own eyes. Oh, it's a miracle. We all thought you were... Oh, sir, your poor sister. What a tragedy. I know, Avery. I know about my sister's murder. Miss Reed expected you to return to assist with the funeral. Right up until the last minute. Where have you been, Mr. Jonathan? We needed you here. How is my mother? Not well, I'm afraid, sir. Miss Reed is very fragile since the police brought her back home. The police? What happened? Miss Reed was found walking in the streets. She kept saying she had spoken with her son and daughter. She's resting now. Has she received appropriate medical care? I'm taking care of Miss Reed myself. Hospitals are so overwhelmed by the epidemic that they can only accept patients infected by influenza. Perhaps we could arrange a short trip. Somewhere sunny, like France. She has always been very fond of France. I think leaving London could do her good. I'm afraid Miss Reed is too frail for the moment. Recently, she started going out at night without remembering it. I have to watch her carefully. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. I'll stay, sir. I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir, but your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry, I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. You have served this family extremely well, Avery. Your support during these terrible times is much appreciated. Then I will stay. All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. You really think
think I don't take enough care of my mother, Avery? Yes, I do, Mr. Jonathan. You clearly have something more to say. Speak your mind, Avery. I know you work hard to help the sick, but what will you do once the epidemic is over? I really don't know. I have always enjoyed seeing New Horizons. Once the epidemic is over, it would be nice to leave London for a while. I understand, Mr. Jonathan. But you have to realize that your mother needs you. Your next departure could break her heart. Do you need medical attention, Avery? Thank you, but I'm all right, sir. Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan. But please return as soon as possible. Your father and I have spoken about your fiancé, Mary. We believe he'll be an honorable husband for you. We'll set a date for the marriage, then. That way, I'm sure one of my children will give me grandchildren. I understand your thirst for knowledge, Jonathan. And your father and I are proud of it. But you are not that young anymore, my son. When will I meet your soulmate? You could ascribe my romantic tendencies to my French origins if you want, Aubrey. But I'll never cease to believe in a match made in heaven, my beloved. I really wish you could meet her mother. You would love her.
I remember Sunday walks. Mary? Oh, my dear daughter. How are you tonight? How is your sweet boy? Mother. Good evening. Jonathan! Is it you? Where have you been, my prodigal son? I'm right here, Mother. I'm finally home. Yes. But this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost. And now found. But where is your sister? Where is Mary? Mary? She... She is gone, Mother. I know she's gone. The question is, when will she return as you have? I miss my grandson so much. It's been days since their last visit. Mother. Do you know what's been going on in this area? Not really. I don't go out much due to the epidemic, and when I do, I tend to get lost. What do you mean, you get lost? I hope you don't go outside alone. Of course not. When I go out, your father always comes with me, but he leaves me there sometimes, and I have trouble finding the way back. Have you returned to Whitechapel Cemetery since Mary's funeral? I never want to go back to that awful place. Wait. I think I went back once. And you were there too. And Mary? No. That can't be true. It was just a bad dream, Mother. A nightmare, yes. Mary was so angry. I walked back home alone. If that kind policeman had not called Avery from the station, I don't know what would have happened. Tell me, Mother, how are you? All alone in this big house with only Avery to take care of you. I'm sad most of the time. Sad that you have left me here alone. Sad that you don't tell me when you come or go. I'm so sorry, Mother. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I was coming home. I was home. London, the Thames, and then it happened. What happened, Johnny? I lost my way. Somewhere between the boat and the house, my life changed completely. You should have told me, Johnny. I would have understood. You always were a secretive little boy. Do you need anything, Mother? Can I help you? I just want you to stay with me, Jonathan. Your room is ready. I asked Avery to make your bed. I'll stay as long as I can, I promise. Do you need anything else? Just one thing. Stop staring at me like that. As much as I love you, it breaks my heart to look at those empty and dead eyes. Are you working on a new painting? Not recently. I have trouble focusing on my subject and my mind quickly drifts. It's the same thing when I try to write poetry. I recently met a talented painter with an excellent technique. I wish you two could meet. I'm sure you'd like her. I'd be glad to meet her. What is her name? Is she famous? Is she dead too? She's not famous, and her name is of no importance. And yes, she is also dead. The important thing is, I hope you two get along. If she ever fancies meeting your mother, I'd be glad to welcome her into my home. Do you think Avery is right? Do you think I should take better care of you? I don't blame you. But you abandoned me, son. A mother should not survive her children. It's unbearable to know you're not here anymore. 
I know I have failed you since I returned. I even watched you bury Mary from a distance. From now on, I will protect you. You have my word. You don't have to apologize to me, Johnny. Do you think I did not notice how much you have changed? Have I changed that much, Mother? Am I still your son? You are still, and you'll always be. Despite your pale skin, your bloody eyes, and that echoing sadness in your voice. Why do you say Mary is visiting you, Mother? You know that's impossible. Why should it be? Are you not standing in front of me right now? Why should it be any different with your sister? But Mary really is dead, Mother. Yes. And are you not dead too? Isn't your father dead? And my grandson and my son-in-law, you're all gone. But you all still visit me from time to time. But I'm not dead, Mother. I'm really here, talking to you, trying not to cry. Oh, it breaks my heart to have to tell you this. But of course you're dead, my darling boy. Just look at you, as pale as my Mary. Father seems to have left me some documents. Some sort of treasure hunt game. Do you know anything about them? No, Johnny. But your father always loved to write these little games for you when you were a boy. Don't you remember? I remember now. He used to post me these riddles, as though they were sent by a mysterious games master. I'd spend weeks trying to decipher them. Your father was always so proud each time you found the answer. He was not just the serious doer banker everybody thought he was. I was proud too. How could I forget that? The important thing is that you remember it now. I'll tell your father the next time I see him. He'll be so happy. Could father have conceived some sort of final game for me before he left? I really can't say, Johnny. Perhaps you should talk with Avery about that. He was your father's confidant, more than I. Do you really see Mary and father? Do you also see me as one of the dead? Yes. For many years, it was just a game. Since your father left us without a word, I took to the habit of speaking to him. Yes, I remember. I sometimes spied on you and listened to you talking with father in the garden. It made me so angry then. But it was just a game, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But since then, my poor dead Mary visited me in my room. She led me to her grave, and there you were. I now know the dead can haunt us. I'm so sorry. You did not deserve to endure this. Mary should never have done this to you. That's true, my son. But you know what the worst part is? I liked it when Mary spoke in my head. Now she is silent, and it makes me so sad. Should I leave you alone? Just ask, and I swear you'll never hear from me again. Oh no, Johnny. You're always welcome in this house. And one day, when I finally die, we'll all be together again. Just as Mary promised us. Do you need my medical attention, Mother? I'm all right, son. Don't worry about me. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Yes, Jonathan? Spending next summer in France. Absolutely. Why not? Yes, Mr. Jonathan? Do you know 
my mother speaks to the dead members of this family. Yes. I sometimes hear her speaking to you, Miss Mary, and her baby. Sometimes your father, too. So she thinks I'm also dead. And what about you? I believe she only sees her relatives as the dead she speaks to, Mr. Jonathan. It breaks my heart to see Miss Reed like that. to help her. She thinks I'm a ghost, too. Whatever I say, she just sees me as another dead relative. But you are still alive, Mr. Jonathan. That's the difference. And I am sure Miss Reed will realize it soon. I found an old letter written by my father and addressed to me. Do you know anything about it, Avery? Your father wanted me to give you this letter for your 35th birthday. But you left for the war, and the letter remained in his office. Until tonight. I realize now, you knew my father better than I did. Do you know why he left, Avery? Did he ever speak to you about his departure? No, sir. Mr. Reed was not exactly forthcoming. Perhaps this letter will give you the information you require. Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan. But please return as soon as possible. 